Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here and I'm back with the 23 January 1942 turn 48 combat replay and my analysis. So I think the big uh, conversation this turn is going to be what is going on in the Java Sea and their Surabaya. I think it's going to be wild this turn. So uh, listen to this. Get a beer. Get your favorite drink. This is going to be fun. Or maybe not so fun. Let's find out. Okay, well, we're off to the races. 23 January. All right, so he grabs uh, Kev Yang for free. We were there. All right, the show's over at Kagayan. I don't think I mentioned it too much in the last turn, but he did land there, so. Ah! Man, did you see how big that thing was? That would have been a good hit, man. Oh, and it could have been a good, good sink. So the Perch um, fired some Mark 14s at a large AK, and they hit and did not detonate. So now we have to um, get through that. So yeah, th they look pretty large, so this would have been a great one to bag. Unfortunately, Mark 14 torpedoes came in, and we did not get anything out of it. But it's just validating that he's going this way, so we'll keep at it. Uh, being in deep water, we took no damage from the uh, counterattack. Hmm. So the rowboat, a rowboat 68's down there in. Uh... Down there near uh, Sydney. But um, we know that he's there now. So I've taken precautions to bolster my ASW work here. Oh! We got a hit, guys. Nice. All right, so it looks like the rowboat 068 takes two hits. Probably not enough to sink it by any means. But it's enough to make him move it or possibly even uh, send it back to base. So this is good. But Sydney is a vital port for me. We cannot risk it getting shut down due to sub. So I'm going to be flooding the area with ASW. You got aircraft. I got... Patrol boats, we're going to lock that down. Oh, I-175. Okay, so that's two subs now. Okay. More the merrier. That's the way I see it. So now we have two confirmed subs off of Sydney. Oh, dang. It's always a crapshoot when you're shooting at a destroyer because they can usually dodge. Oh, man. Ah, I would hate to lose another Dutch sub right now. Yeah, you know, that's not good at all. So two hits with heavy damage is gonna very is gonna be very serious to us because we can't really possibly even get into Surabaya anymore with him coming in like that, and that's normally why I would repair a sub like this. So definitely not ideal to be getting hit like that right now. Touch a tough couple days for Dutch subs, right? Yeah, he's all over us, man. I hope we can survive this. We're in shallow water here, too, so there's no... Yeah, this, this sub's quite finished. Dang it. There's no getting out of this right now. Yeah, this sub is finished. This sub is not going to make it home. Oh, you're absolutely dead now. So the sub was damaged so bad that it had to surface, and these three destroyers caught up to it. This is a big loss for us. The K-15 is down. There it is. That's a shame. Dutch subs are so good. That's two Dutch subs in two days now. Ah, uh, how about a little payback, though, huh? 
Okay, so the K-18 just south of Camran Bay did catch up to one of his, uh, what appears to be an unescorted AK, and we put a torpedo into it. So let's listen in to see if we can hear our favorite sound. Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, you guys see this? The trusty? This is actually a British sub. I brought it down from Aiden some some days ago. So we have it operating in deep water here. Uh, it, what it was subjected to was a um, an ASW attack. So it's his destroyers out here patrolling around. But this British sub commander doesn't doesn't give a dang about anything. He said, "I don't care. I'm going to shoot at these destroyers anyway." And and he uh, fires six torpedoes and misses. But you know you got to give him some. Some points for bravery. He wasn't afraid to engage these guys. So, good. So we know that the, the British subs are not afraid to fight. A lot of sub activity this round. Oh, we got a Mavis. Oh, did you guys see that? A lot of sightings here that are concerning. There he goes. He's going up for the landing, guys. The usual bombings in China. Looks like a swing and a miss there. The thunderstorms helped. Ah, big attack on Sion. To what end, I don't know. The supply hits are good. Ah, he's softening us up. I think he's trying to attack your guys. Okay, see on again. Yeah, he's really going after Sion. Oh, look at this. We get in, we get an unmolested into Hen Yang. And we get some casualties in here, which every, every squad that we take out is a good thing for us. Oh, Seagull's a Kagayan. Let's see if we can get something done here. Eh, not quite. Ah, 6,000 feet. I thought I had him a bit lower than that. Oh, P-35s. They're desperate, man. They're looking for anything they can do here. Ooh. Nice, nice. Okay. A little something, something. Awesome. So our P-35s actually put up a pretty decent fight here. Uh, and they said, you know what? We're not going to just let you come in here unmolested. So we get a bomb hit into the... The Namikaze, which is a, a troop transport, and also one into the Goyo Maru. I doubt either one of these will sink, but you'll have to repair them. <sighs> well, so much for the escort that I called in. They decided not to make it. Uh, let's just fast forward through this because it's not going to be pretty. I sent escort on all of these attacks, and it just didn't happen. So it looks like we don't get through. These two planes, which I had on a naval strike, get shot down, possibly more. And we see that the Shoho is here. Again, no escort, even though I called for an... Oh! When we get through. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, okay. Nice. Alright, so these Dornier 24s get through. And we put two bomb hits into the Amag... I'm a Gassan Maru, and it's on fire. Again, I doubt it will sink, but it, it's just our way of pushing back and saying that we're not as satisfied with what he's doing right now, right? So I have a strong suspicion that some of these will get through. Let's see. Uh, very few did. And, yeah, so that was a complete bust. Almost all of our aircraft were shot down with, from just 
three zeros and we don't get anything through that does any damage. Hopefully these get through, right? Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Come on. Give us something good here. Come on, guys. Give us something here. God, I can't believe that. Completely useless. They've been training on Java for this whole time. This was their big chance, right? This was their time to shine, and they do nothing. Completely disgusted. All right, so attack on Hen Yang here. Trying to soften it up a bit. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we've been looking for this whole campaign is something like this that's going to really disrupt a unit. That's going to be good for us. And we got more coming. Another little chip damage there. The heavy clouds aren't helping us, but it, we're disrupting this unit. Okay, so that's the AM phase, I believe. Okay, here's PM phase. Oh, man. So now he's got uh, he's got a lot of ASW stuff going on near um, our ball now. These one thirty nines are utter trash, complete trash, complete trash. I've yet to see them do anything wor worthwhile this entire campaign. This is their big chance. This is the invasion of Java, and they do nothing. I'm so disgusted with that. Oh, seagulls are at it again. Let's see what they can do. Yep, not much. I think I've got them coming in too high. Oh, <laughs> these guys are back. They're angry, man. Nice, nice. All right, so we get another bomb in the Namikaze. Again, these are small bombs, but, you know, it hurts. Hey, they finally get in, and I'm sure they'll all get shot down. Yeah, pfft. garbage. I have, I've... The Dutch Air Force is so pathetic in this game. I, I, I'm sure in real life they maybe have performed better, but in this game they give me a sour taste because they just can't get anything done. Let's let's feed them some more kills, why don't we? A two get through. And of course they do nothing. So we lose another ton of these things and get nothing out of it. Well, these get all the way through. Let's see if they actually didn't do anything. And again, nothing. They get through. Oh, okay. There's something. Ah, Suzuya. All right, so we do get through this time, finally. And it looks like we put another bomb into this Amagasan Maru. Um, this is taking a, f a few bombs now, so I would love to see. Uh, I'd love to see this thing sink now. Just, I don't think it will. Yeah, 
And another raid gets through. Okay. Oh, okay. Arizona Marie takes a hit. That's one bomb hit on fire. Not going to sink by any means. But it does appear that we damaged some troops that are unloading or about to unload. Something sank. You hear that? Ah! Oh, dang it. The Pompano took a fire. I took a shot at a massive AMC. That's an armed merchant cruiser. And it appears that it missed, but oh it, no, it hit. He had a hit with no explosion. What a shame, man! It would have been awesome to sink that thing. Oh man, something else sank. Oh, 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 oh. nice, nice. All right, I'm hearing ships sinking now. You guys hearing that? Those aren't mine. All right, so S34 puts a Mark 10 torpedo into the. Uh, Katsuragisan Maru, which is a patrol boat, and these typically can't take many hits, so let's listen in. There's sink. Alright. Okay, so here it is. Um, he's coming on at Malang. That's where he's making his landing on Java, is Malang. And I know exactly why. We'll talk about it. Oh, here we go. This is this is it, guys. I'm just about certain that we will fall at Clark Field this turn. It's been weakened so many times. I don't see us getting through this. So let's find out. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could hold? I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Whoa, oh my gosh, we held. We somehow held, guys. Look at this. Oh, nice. Oh, that's awesome. Um, okay, so is this going to win us the war? Absolutely not. But look at what we did to him. <laughs> look at the casualty spread. Um, this, would I, this is what I would call a bad die roll. This is the Gary Grigsby component to every every single thing that happens in this game. Because on paper, if you look at the numbers here, it should have been a slam dunk, right? But when it calculates the the adjust the adjustments here, it's only two to one. And even with that, um, we do lose the uh, the forts here, which it's not going to be good for us next turn. But we inflict a lot of casualties. And that's really what we need to be doing right now. So we live to fight another day. I can't believe it. We held up Clark again. All right, so this is him testing the waters down here. Um, uh, south of Kukong, which is our blocking unit to keep him from taking us out or, or opening up the hex side at Kukong. Uh, and when you look at the spread here, it's 200 to 400. So on uh, no point could he ever take us out at the, from here because we're on times three terrain. So it's more like 1,200 to 200. So he's going to need to bring in a ton more troops to dislodge this. And we take no casualties here. Japanese bomb. Oh, here we go. Back to the bull crap. Here we go with this stupid bombardment nonsense. That's all he's got. That's all he can actually do here. All right, let me take some casualties, but whatever. I don't care. I can recover these. This is definitely not an accurate representation of what he has in the hex. Unless he's pulling troops away. That's a possibility, but... Um, yeah, uh, we're not going anywhere soon. And another bullcrap bombardment down here. Or up here, rather. At, at Sion. And that's fine. These are very sustainable casualties. I think this bombardment mechanic in this game is so stupid, but whatever. If that's all he's is that's all he can do, I can I can tank this till the end of the game. Mm. 
So this here in Malaya is our last real hex that we're blocking, as far as I recall, on this road. So once he takes this out, these cowards just surrender, and I hope they get executed. They don't deserve to live anymore. They should have fought to the last man, and they only killed 11 Japanese. They didn't kill them. They just hurt some. Yeah, take him out back and shoot him. I have no use for those. So this pretty much opens up that whole rail line now. As far as I can tell. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And there goes Kagayan. Coming in with two naval guard units. Okay. So it looks like he has a combined total of... Oh, man, there goes the aircraft. <sighs> I should have pulled them. I should have pulled them in the Malay Belay. I don't know what I was thinking, why I didn't move them. Yeah, that was a waste of aircraft. Absolutely. So those units retreat. I don't know why I didn't move these to Malay Belay. It seems like it, I, I knew that he was going to be landing there. This, this was a, definitely a mistake on my point, on my part, leaving these there. And there goes Kagayan. Fortress Kagayan is down. It was a good run. We had a lot of a lot of fun there, but it just it's over. Oh, of course we got Vanimo here. Yay. Good job. We captured a undefended base. Oh, okay. So these are probably all dead here too. Ah, they're still alive. These are leftover units from Sinkawang. One destroyed, three retreated. Okay, this is us. This is us, guys. This is us retaking Henyang. Can we do it? Can we do it? Ah, ha, ha. nice. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so we have dispatched the Japanese paratroopers. They are gone, and we've reopened the rail line. At least we've reopened the supply lanes all the way down to Kukong here. This is good. Look at these casualties. Fantastic. That's the end of the paratroopers. So a lot of bad and a little good. So I'll be really happy to look at the the intel on this as soon as this is over, and we can get a better idea of what we've got going on here now. Okay, get some more. Um, some more reinforcements, and these are aircraft that are moving around. And that Chinese core is new. Okay, but let's look at the intel. Okay, so we're back with the intel, and I can only describe today as the great Java turkey shoot. Let's take a look. Oh, man, this is... <laughs> This is a bad day. Aircraft losses today, 56 to 1. Absolutely pathetic. Pathetic. <clears throat> These garbage 139s, right? 22 losses. Vildebeest, completely annihilated, 13. Our P36 5s, that was my fault. I did not pull them out of Kagayan in time. They were lost on the ground, but they did put up a great fight. But all the same, it's my fault that they got destroyed. Same with these seagulls. This should not have happened. I could have pulled them out, but I didn't. And that's on me. Uh, we lost a bunch of PBYs uh, due to the air attacks today. 
well, two were lost to ops losses. Those were probably just routine patrol. These two were shot down. Another two swordfish lost. Uh, two uh, flying tiger P40Bs lost to ops. Uh, he lost a whopping 1 0 today. 1 0. All right, so 56 to 1. The absolute worst performance I've ever had in this campaign to date. Uh, I know I have Dutch planes and they're not great, but I thought they'd do better than that. Let me show you something real quick before we continue. Um, I set all of these buffaloes right here, all of these aircraft, I set to escort, okay? So I took them off a of cap. So my understanding was if they have no cap set, they will just escort stuff, right? But they didn't. So I don't recall because it's been a while since I've actually had to escort a bomber raid because we don't really bomb stuff right now. Do I have to set a target? Is that what it is? Oh, maybe I need to set a target. I just thought that the bomber, the fighters would pick a unit and escort it, but I guess not. And the problem with the naval strike is I don't know how to escort that because I don't know where they're going to be attacking. They could go anywhere. So if you guys know more about how to make um, fighters escort naval strikes without a set target before you give them that order, please let me know because I don't know how to do that. I know how to escort a raid going from t point A to point B and back, but when your target is a naval attack and the and the target priority is up to this individual squadron commander, I don't know how to escort that. So um, we lost a lot of aircraft today because what I thought would work for an escort did not work. So it was not my intention to send all of those planes unescorted. I'm not that dumb, but. This is a game mechanic that I clearly don't understand. And all those bombers went out unescorted because what I thought was going to be an escort didn't work out. It did nothing for me. Again, these air, these ships were not where they're at now. So I didn't know where the bombers were going to go. It just sucks that we lost that many aircraft today. Uh, for top pilot, let's look at the pilots. It, it was a slaughter. Okay, Of the 56 planes we lost, uh, 14 are KIA. 13 are wounded, and I'm sure a lot of these wounded are, I'm sorry, KIA are the Dutch pilots, which, you know, quite honestly, I, I don't really care. I'm not impressed by them one bit. Sorry to all my Dutch viewers. I love Holland. I love your Dutch subs, but your planes in, in the Dutch East Indies are, leave something to be desired, and they've been nothing but a disappointment to me from day one. Uh, real quick, though, since we're in here, what we can do is see if we can re recover some of these pilots that are actually wounded so right here anything like that we can send them to the reserve and from there we'll be able to determine if they're going to actually heal up or not okay hopefully some of these guys can be recovered All right, cool. So all these um, wounded guys will be returning to their units at some point here. So if we look at the reserve now and go by wounded in action, anything that has a return date is going to be returned to the into the reserve pool. If they don't have a return date, they're not going to get better. So what you do is you retire them. See? Because this is implying that they're so badly wounded that they can never fly again because they won't get a return date. So we're just going to go ahead and take these pilots and retire them. And it's a shame too because some of these are really good. Some were not. But if they're never going to get better and they're just going to be wounded, there's only one thing to do, right? And that's retire them. Almost done. I figured I would just do that now just to show you guys how this all works. Oh, nope. Make sure you click on the right guy. Okay, so we retired all of our permanently wounded pilots. Okay, let's continue on here. So we've reviewed the aircraft losses, which were just outrageous. Um, Army lost points creeped up quite a bit for us on this turn. 
uh, due to the losses we took in, in various places where he won today. But we did manage to increase the Japanese uh, army loss points. And I will say this, for those of you that follow the dojo game, I'm pretty sure I've killed more Japanese troops now than dojo has. And we're only in January, and he was in in uh, April. So I don't know if that says anything or not, but I think I'm doing a little better there. Uh, Allied ship sunk this last turn. Uh, for sure, we lost the Stutch sub to K-15, which to me is a big loss. This was a great sub. Uh, had great range, carried lots of torpedoes, but it just got caught leaving, and there was nothing I could do to really save it. Um, I was just trying to transit back to Serbia to rearm it, and it got caught. Actually, I'm going to blame the actual skipper because he fired torpedoes at a bunch of destroyers and then they got wind of where he was at and he just didn't make it out. Again, a big loss for me. I don't like losing Dutch subs. That's two in a row. Uh, we did also, however, sink a patrol boat, another three-pointer, which are great patrol boats. I always like it when I get those because I think the three-point ones have the triple uh, depth charge launchers. So that's good for us. Uh, we also heard a number of ships sinking uh, during the in between the end of the round there. So I suspect some of those are going to be here from the ships we bombed. And a couple are going to be here uh, at Kagayan. So uh, we sank a few ships, a couple. But that's cool. Obviously, it's not going to end the end the war tomorrow, but it's it's something. And especially if we sank a couple down here, it'll justify the massive losses we took in the air this turn. But um, with that massive defeat in the air at Java, I think it's safe to say that uh, the days for South Java are going to be numbered. He's come ashore at Malang, and this is just an Advon unit, but he's got more ships, I'm sure. Coming in right behind it. Okay. They're going to continue to land here. And the reason that he's landing here is because he knows we have mines at Surabaya. And it's just too dangerous to come in here. Plus, we have coastal defense guns. We have all that stuff. And I don't think he's willing to, to tangle with that stuff. So he's going to land here and march into Surabaya, which is a very smart thing to do. I, I, don't, I, I would do the same thing. Let's get back to our intel. Uh, okay, so we looked at the ship sunk. Uh, this number is ab absolutely not accurate. I feel like we're closer to 45 or 50 at this point, but we'll wait for the Japanese propaganda ministry to give us a, give us a hint here. So take a look at the Japanese score versus ours. He's definitely in the green now and, and trending upwards every day. He's going to continue taking a lot of bases and killing more of our troops that we can't save. So this number is going to start skyrocketing, skyrocketing as it, especially when Clark Field falls. Expect this to hit 10,000. Expect this to hit 4,000 or 3,500 because we have so many troops there, and they're just all marked for death. So we can take a look at the tactical situation. We'll start in China. Status quo in the north. Nothing happening here uh, of note. In the center, it's hard to tell, but it looks like he's pulling some troops back out of um, Changsha. And I'm wondering where he's going. I'm starting to wonder if he's going to try shifting. You see that? He's got 19 units here. This count has gone down, and the troop count seems to have gone down a, a little bit. I wonder if he's going to start rotating down this way to try to roll up our southern flank. So I'm going to keep watching this number every turn but this might be a shift somehow some way uh one good thing is we did retake hen yang and we caused a lot of casualties to these paratrooper units what i am concerned about though is if you look at the hex side details is the rail line to Changsha is still blocked the roads are fully open okay this is we're going to retake that well they're not open yet but they will be we're going to retake this base next turn so we have rail lines from hen yang and down but we don't have a rail line here at Changsha yet. Um, my concern is this unit is indicating that it's moving into this hex. And when it does that, it's going to open up this hex side. Uh, and that could allow his troops to pour out this way. So I'm going to be immediately following these units. And I'm going to drive them in behind and reclose up this hex. Or else he can break through here. So this is actually kind of a, a, a big deal. 
and he's got a, a a couple hex head start on us here. So we need to quickly get into here and seal up that gap. Or else we're in uh, we're in trouble because if I understand this correctly, if this unit goes in through this way, it opens up that hex and that allows this unit to go through that way. And I do not want that. So we're going to come in behind here and block this in ASAP. And once we get in there, we're going to continue moving into Changshaw to keep it to keep it closed. So it's kind of a race a race against time at this point if we can actually get that done. What I should have done was set a unit to uh, pursue, like in, uh, uh, what is it, reserve. But I didn't think that he would retreat this way, or I didn't factor that in. So we need to fix this quick. Because if he opens his hex side, this, he's going to flank us here. And he'll have a straight shot in to, to get in behind us at chain shot, and then it's game over. In Kukong, um, I expect the supply situation to start resolving itself. It already appears to be getting better. Once we have full supply here, we can try another attack on his units here. Because we don't have supply, and I know he does neither. But now that this is opened back up, we have supply coming down this road. And now we're going to have supply coming down this road and also back this way. So we will have a line open to Kukong again. It's just going to take us about a turn to get stocked back up, and then we can make another attack. He did a probing attack down here with the bombardment. And I think he realized that he does not have enough to take us out here. So we're safe here and we're safe here. We just need to fix this problem right now. Like a emergency quick. Man, I'm trying to think of any possible way that I could do that myself. Maybe if I send one unit down there to meet them. I'm going to try that. We'll hit it from both sides. We're going to move in one way and move in the other way. And hopefully we can close up the hex sides quickly. I don't know. It, I'm concerned. <laughs> to say the least, I'm very concerned that um, we're not going to be able to close that up in time. I don't know. It's it's a big what if in this game. It's a, it's a mechanic that I'm not familiar with. But I don't know if Lodric is familiar with that either. So we'll have to see what happens here. I, I really hope he's not. Anyway. Otherwise, things are okay in China. We just need to resolve the situation quick. This was something that happened. I don't think he realized it was going to be in his favor, but it actually might be. Over here in Burma, as you can see, a lot of our ships have a lot of detection on them. Because he's got his uh, naval search planes all over the place. And he's also spotting stuff here in Point, in uh, Port Blair. We did manage to get the bulk of the troops out, though. And we're going to send these up to uh, Rangoon just to be safe. Let me see. What, what does this unit have that's any good? Now, we'll, use it, we'll take it up to uh, Calcutta and, re and rebuild it. But we did get another supply convoy in, in the meantime. So we get another 12,000 plus, maybe 20,000 supplies into Rangoon this turn, which is always good. We have plenty of aircraft here. We're ready for the Japanese to show up and start doing what they need to do. Obviously, this is just a, a nightmare for subs down here. So I'm pulling all the subs north, and I'm going to continue moving them north. Uh, we do have this surface task force here indicating moving north west which would be this direction so this could be another foray into uh into the uh, indian ocean here so we'll keep an eye on that i'm not worried about this it's only showing four ships and i don't don't even know what he would be thinking to do here so this may actually be an opportunity for us to engage him so we'll see what we get out of our um naval search in the coming days but this may be an opportunity for us Kind of like I kind of like these odds. So we'll see what's we'll see what direction this surface task force goes, and we'll look to see if we can get an engagement going. Because if it's only what I think it is, we should have plenty of ships capable of, of doing damage to that. In Malaya, he just took this uh, hex here and destroyed the cowards that were in that 
grid. So now it's fully open. He has full rail lines from Bangkok down to Singapore. And honestly, he doesn't even need to worry about these guys. He's going to let them die on the vine, I'm sure, because he's got the rail line that he needs to move stuff. So there it is. Uh, Malaya is fully 100% in his control as far as bases go. And logistically, um, it's no longer a concern. What I can do is something like this. Try to move these guys over here, but I doubt they're going to get there anytime soon because they're not really on a road here. So this could take a week or more. Oh, excuse me, it's late here. Um, I could take a week or more to get these guys here to block this road back up. But we'll try it. Everything's quiet in Palembang for now. We did lose a battle here, and now these troops are just kind of out here doing whatever. I think I'll send them in this direction just to do it. We have this unit spotted here moving southwest, which is this direction. I'm not quite sure where it's going. Kagayan fell last turn. These guys should have moved, but I did not have them set to uh, absolute. So now they're stuck here. Um, now they might actually die next turn when they should have been kind of out here by now. Kind of unfortunate, but they were retreating from a surface task force that was in the same hex, but they should have just left. But I fixed it. So now, basically, the only troops we have left on Mindanao are here at Malaybalay. We've got about 7,500 infantry troops, another 12,000 in support. So I'm kind of warning if it would be worthwhile for us to make an attack on Cagayan. Because if we take a look at... The attack on Kagayan. See if I can find it. Let me find that Kagayan attack. Hmm. I'll find it. I want to. Okay, here we go. He's got 3,200 troops here, 121 in assault value. We have 650. I'm wondering if we make an attack here, if we can get in there and just push him out. I kind of think we should try it. Although, he did capture our forts. Rough terrain. I don't know. I'll think about it. We may be able to attack here and kind of do a quick counterattack and retake it, but I don't know. I don't know if these guys are up to the task or not. I'll think about it. All right. Obviously, the the great Java Turkey shoot occurred here. Uh, he's landing at Malang. He's got this Shoho task force here. More troops coming in here. A lot of cruisers and destroyers covering this. So here's something that I am concerned about. Do you recall last turn we had a carrier task force here? Well, where is it now? I don't see it. Do you? So it's missing. So we need to figure that out. I need to get these uh, naval search aircraft kind of back up and running here and put into places where they can actually add some value because I don't know where his carrier went and I'm very concerned that he's going to head down towards Perth and we're not going to see him. So... I'll do what I can to address the situation, but now that Java's about to fall, um, this was a major spotting base for us, and now that we don't have it, we're going to have a big blind spot, so I'll need to be moving some some aircraft south here to start guarding this expansive Indian Ocean that previously wasn't really a concern. It is now. So we got to figure out where he's at. All right. Let's take a look over here at the last little area. Uh, he just took Kaviang, but I've noticed here, if you look at all of our subs, we have really high detection now. Look at that. Uh, he's got all kind of ASW ships up and running now. Uh, ASW aircraft, rather. So we're going to have to start pulling away from Rabal a bit and push our blockade further because he's able to spot our subs. And if we're spotted, he can attack us and hurt us. If we look down here, though, 
that that uh, AO task force is cited. Okay, so it's back. It's moving northwest towards Rabal, as is the Kido Butai. Well, it's moving north east, which would be this way. So I I guess that he's moving it northeast. Probably go to truck to rearm. Because this yet this does not yet have the port capacity to rearm the carriers properly. So he may just have topped off fuel here with these AOs. And now he's gonna send them back to truck for a full rearm. That's my guess. But I'm gonna take this opportunity, since he's no longer over here, we're gonna move these ships into Luganville. We're gonna re reinitiate our convoys and get everything moving again. So we have quite a few convoys coming in. I want to get those moving. Uh, so we know for a fact he's got at least two subs working here in Sydney. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be grabbing some uh, more ASW ships and sending them. And we're going to make a big old mess out of... Uh, we're going to make a big mess out of um, Sydney and his subs. So let's grab some stuff that's got some high ASW. Stewart can go. This can go, and these all can go. We'll take these for now. We're going to send these guys over Sydney. And we're going to just make this a wall of freaking ASW ships here. Plus, I also moved, check these out. These Hudsons I just moved in, and these are actually pretty awesome uh, ASW platforms. If you look at this, they have radar. So these things carry radar, which should, in theory, help them spot ASV2 radar. Let's see if we can learn about that. I don't know if, if we can learn about that, but we'll try it. Let's go electronics. ASV2 radar. Range, 45,000. Aircraft radar. So that could really help find subs. Wow, it's cool. Huh. So yeah, I moved these over from New, New Zealand last turn. And I, they've, I'm going to have them doing a lot of ASW work. And I think they're going to do a great job for me. And I actually did set up a search. Uh, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, yes, I set up a, uh, a dang... Uh, what do you call it? The the search arc. Yeah, and I usually usually oppose to these, but it kind of makes sense here. There's no questioning that if we narrow the focus as it pertains to ASW work here, we know for a fact that there's just a small little sliver of stuff to find. So we're going to put these guys to work, and we're going to keep his subs pinned down so bad that they're just going to have to find somewhere else to go. And then we'll be able to get more ships in here. So, yeah, Lodric subs better watch out because I got some pretty decent ASW ships on site now and I've got more coming look at these guys these are pretty decent right here and I've got more coming this guy's not so good but he's still he's still something right and we'll open up Sydney Harbor and, Harbor and get some ships in there so yeah I'm pulling subs away here a bit because they're just kind of at risk with this sighting We did sink a ship here at uh, Tulagi last turn. So that's why our detection is high, because we sank a ship and everybody knows we're there. But pretty cool that we got another patrol boat taken out. So yeah, this was a pretty uh, wild turn. Uh, the thing at Java went so badly for me because my escort planes did not escort. And there's just nothing I know how to do to fix that unless somebody else can tell me. Uh, I don't know how to escort naval strikes. I don't know if you can. If they had been escorted, we would not have lost that many ships or planes, and we would have probably got more ship hits. So uh, definitely disappointing. And so my biggest concerns now are these three things. Where did the little mini Kido Butai go that was here? Um, are we going to be able to close this hole here? And... Where are these guys going? Those are the kind of the three big topics of discussion for the upcoming turn. So, uh, Lodrick's definitely picked up the pace again. Uh, this thing in Java was much needed for him. He needed to get this done, and he did. 
He finally got Malaya secured, so now he can start moving up to Burma. Part about a whole month ahead of schedule here. And while we temporarily restored things at Henyang, we need to fix this problem right here and make sure that he can't come back through here and, and block us up. So, there we go. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting me and Lodric. Uh, our, our Discord channel is almost at 100 people now. I can't believe it. It just seems like three months ago I had me and one other guy, and now we've got almost 100. So if you're not on there yet, you need to get there because you're missing out on a lot of cool discussions, behind-the-scenes stuff. I show guys in my Allied Secret channel things that I don't talk about even here because it's top secret, and Lodric probably does the same. Helson from my other play-by-email has, has an open channel there too for people who want to follow his Japan side, and I have a channel there for mine. So... Come over to Discord if you're not there yet and join in on the conversation because it's pretty awesome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm going to end it here.